Stan Gibalisco here. I'm going to describe uh, how simple high pass and low pass resistance inductance circuits work. Uh, I also have a video explaining how their inductance, or pardon me, their resistance capacitance counterparts work. So I uh, figured that I ought to go with the RL circuit as well as the RC circuit and explain how low pass and high pass filters of this particular variety work. The arrangements, you can have two of them. One, you can put the resistor in series and the inductor in parallel. And the second one, the inductor in series and the resistor in parallel. Uh, let's uh, let's go backwards and do this one first. Um, if you consider the frequency on the horizontal axis, F, and the amplitude, and we'll call it A, on a vertical axis, then a high-pass response looks like this, and a low-pass response looks like this. In the high-pass response, or filter, as you increase the frequency, the amplitude increases, and it follows a curve like this. In the low-pass, as you increase the frequency, the amplitude decreases. At a certain point, the voltage in either case is approximately 0 0.707 times the maximum. So here the voltage starts or the amplitude starts to drop or the voltage starts to drop at the output and when it drops to 70.7 percent or 1 over the square root of 2 times the maximum you have three decibels down and by definition we call that the cutoff frequency right there and similarly with the high pass response when the output amplitude or voltage is 70.7 percent of its maximum possible three decibels down you call this the cutoff frequency now there are specific formulas for the cutoff frequencies in RC and RL filters, but they aren't the same. The formulas are just a little bit different. In general, though, they're the same for the high pass and low pass filters in either configuration. The formula for the cutoff frequency for either of these two filters is F, the frequency, at the cutoff is equal to the resistance divided by 2 pi times the inductance. Here the frequency can be in Hertz, the resistance in ohms, and the inductance in Henry's. Pi is the circle constant roughly equal to 3.14159. Notice that the entire denominator of the fraction 2 pi L constitutes the entire denominator of this fraction. So that's the formula for Hertz, Ohms, and Henry's. This formula uh, will uh, also work. Uh, I don't know if it will work with um, microhertz and microhenry's. I'm our microhertz, megahertz and microhenrys. I don't believe so. I think you have to always convert to uh, hertz, ohms, and henrys. At least you're safe if you do in advance convert F to hertz, R to ohms, and L to henrys. If you always make the conversion ahead of time, you, this formula will always work. So uh, that is what happens here in this in this particular case, the high pass case, as the signal goes through, um, 
as the frequency increases, the inductor L passes less and less of it, so it shorts less and less of it to ground. Sh uh, at very low frequencies, L shorts practically all of the signal to ground. At, at high frequencies, extremely high frequencies, well past the cutoff point up here, uh, this inductor L chokes off most of the signal and hardly any of it gets shorted to ground, so most of it gets through. In the case of a low-pass filter, the exact opposite takes place. The inductor chokes off more and more of the signal as the frequency goes up, so you get this. Uh, when the signal reaches the cutoff frequency, then you are three decibels down, and beyond that, as the frequency continues to increase, this inductor chokes off more and more of the signal until at frequencies well up into this range, hardly any of the signal gets through to the output. And as with the RC circuit, you do have to have a finite non-zero resistance, uh, because if this were an open circuit, if R were an open circuit, none of the signal would get through. If it were a short circuit, all of the signal would get through. Here, if R were an open circuit, all of the signal would get through. And if R were a short circuit, of course, none of the signal would get through because the output would be short-circuited completely. The resistor is not frequency sensitive. Uh, but the inductor is, just as is the case with uh, the RC filters. So you have high-pass and low-pass RL filters. Um, it, you can't really fabricate inductors very well onto integrated circuit chips, so this kind of circuit is not generally seen in integrated circuit chips, whereas the RC-type circuit is. On the other hand, there are certain situations where you would rather use an inductor than a capacitor. Uh, if you are on a printed circuit board and you don't need to confine all of the components to the uh, microchip uh, dimensions, then you can use small toroidal core inductors. Uh, those keep the entire magnetic field flux confined to the core so that you don't get interaction with surrounding components. So you can miniaturize quite a lot uh, if you go that route. And uh, you can buy those miniaturized toroidal cores and they come with a formula. When you buy it, you'll get a little sheet that uh, gives you a formula that tells you how many turns will give you how much inductance. Of course, you need to be sure to use enameled or insulated wire when you wind uh, a, a toroidal inductor or any inductor around a ferromagnetic core of any shape for that matter. So that's the L and the R of all of this. Stan Jabalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.